video complements the previous one on exercise A03 by showing you how to actually understand uh, recursion fully by tracing stack diagrams, execution stack diagram of your program. So we have the code here that we implemented already, okay, with the front end function here and then our back end recursive function. And I'm going to simply trace through its execution. Okay, so I'm going to resize this window here so that we can both have the code and the trace we're going to make out of it visible on the screen at the same time. So a little bit more resizing, there we go. And uh, here, same thing, a little bit of resizing needed. Mm, it's going to be too small, so I'm going to have to make a trade-off here. And uh, we are going to get a new page. And we're going to see what happens in the execution stack when you're executing this code. So let me start with LCM. LCM is actually the front end function. This is the one that is called from the main. So let me grab a pen. This is going to be the layout of your executable in memory. Okay, simplified layout. You are going to have here your text segment, which is where the program lies. You are going to have here your heap data segment, BSS segment, all together. These are the location of global viable, as a reminder to you. Uh, global viable, something we're going to study real soon, string literals, etc. And then you have your stack. So you are inside of the main, okay? You have some system related information here, which you are going to cover in the computer organization uh, course and operating system maybe. You have here some system information, and then you have everything that is local to the main. What is local to the main? X, Y, and I think we add an extra one, which is choice and result. Okay, this is the activation record of the main. Okay, a couple, a little bit more information here that I'm not going to cover in this course, but we are focused here on the local variable, and these are the local variable part of the activation record of the main function inside of main.c. And then what happens? Well, what happens is that you call for the first time LCM. So we are going to have an activation record for LCM, and I'm going to have to make a little bit of room here by erasing this part of the executable diagram memory. So give me one second. I'm removing the heap, removing the text segment, and next time I will probably pick a bigger eraser. Okay, there we go at last. So now we're going to put on the, this was the main activation record. This is going to be the LCM function activation record. Where is our LCM function? It's here. It takes two parameters. So those parameters are going to be on the stack A and B. Do we have any local variable? Nope. So this is going to be it. This is going to be the activation record on the stack of my call to the LCM function. Well, let's try to take a, let's try to take an example. What do we have as examples that are interesting? Well, we have five and nine which lead to the LCM of 45. So inside the main.c file, the user chose, I think it was choice number two, compute the LCM, okay? And we are calling here the LCM function with parameter five and nine. So what's happening now? Well, the first thing the LCM function does is testing if A or B are greater, lesser than zero strict. It's not the case. So we call LCM B we call another function. So here we are going to have the activation record of our recursive backend function, LCMB. What do we have inside of LCMB? Well, scroll up and see what the function is made of. We don't have any local variable, but we have three parameters, A, B, and N. A was five, B was nine, N was one. This is the activation record for this function. What do we do inside of the code of the function? Well, if n modulo a equals zero, let's see, one modulo five equal zero. No. 
So this is false, this is AND, shortcut evaluation means we don't even consider the rest. We go to this part of the function, which is return whatever an overcall to the same function will return. So here's the situation. This was our first activation record for our first recursive call to LCMB. We are going to have another one. We are going to have another LCM PE recursive call. This is going to be the second activation record for that function. What is it going to look like? A and B are going to be the same. We call with the same parameter A and B. N is going to be modified. N is going to be N plus 1. So the parameter N for this activation record is 2. And I'm not going to trace until the result but you, I'm going to try to give you an idea of what's going on here. Our result will be 45, which means that when n reaches 45, we're good. Let me illustrate this n case. It would be a recursive call with a equal 5, b equal 9 again, and n equal 45. When this activation record is reached, I'm going to call it iteration x, okay? When this activation record is reached, then the test here, N45 modulo 5 and 45 modulo 9, is going to tell me that 45 is both a multiple of 9 and 5. At this point, I return the value of N. So what happens when I do that? Well, the function here, this function call, terminates. We return a value, which is N, 45. Because the function returns, let me see if I have here. Because the function return, everything that is the activation record of that function call is removed from the stack. So all of this disappears. The only thing that matters is that we return the value 45 to the previous function that called me. Who is the previous function that called me? Well, it was myself. And uh, the thing we do with the return value is simply return it, pass it along. So all the, the calls that have been stacked on the stack are going to be removed as the value 45 is passed to the original caller of the function. So this activation record here will go bye-bye. And we are going to remove all those activation record until the very first one. And the very first one is going to be no exception. We just pass along again the value 45 to whoever called us. Who called us? Well, the LCM front-end function. That's ultimately who started all of those recursive call. So inside of this function, let me scroll back. What do we have? Well, we call recursively LCMB, it returns 45. I return it to whoever called me again. So the LCM function also will just lose its activation record and return to whoever called it the value 45. And the value 45 is therefore going to be collected by the main function. This is what it's going to get from all those recursive calls, starting with the call to LCM. And that's pretty much how you need to learn to trace, actually, a recursive activity. The stack is a wonderful tool to allow you to understand that all those variables A and B exist in multiple copies, one for each activation record. And it's also a wonderful tool to illustrate visually uh, what recursion is really doing.